Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, uh, Mr. Evanina. I want to uh, mention what we had just talked about with my colleague from Virginia about the China Initiative um, and remind people that in 2018, the Department of Justice established the China Initiative aimed at securing our critical infrastructure against foreign threats, specifically the CCP, and prosecuting bad actors engaged in theft of intellectual property. Despite its overwhelming success, the Biden administration suspended this program. And I wanted to point out that yesterday I introduced a bill to reestablish this program and counter the CCP's economic warfare and corporate espionage. Would you consider the CCP initiative started under President Trump a success? Uh, unequivocally, and I think uh, regardless of what you call it, the ideation that the United States government will begin the process of looking at uh, the Communist Party of China and their effective and affairs practices towards IP theft and economic espionage, well, no matter what you call that, I think it's the obligation of the United States government and Congress to defeat it. I would agree with you and thank you. And I want to also move on and ask what recommendations um, does the U.S. National Counterintelligence and Security Center have for strengthening trade policy tools to address IP theft by China? Well, at the time, uh, sir, and I left in 2021, I think uh, robust education is the beginning of it all. And I, and I, would, I would proffer that uh, members uh, of this subcommittee and members of other committees and go back to their home districts and have dialogues with their, their governors and their economic development corporations and their, their chambers of commerce to identify, to show the tools and techniques of the Communist Party's investment in their localities and what that economic espionage and intellectual property theft looks like early before it happens. Because once the FBI comes to town and investigates, the data and intelligence and intellectual property is already gone. And I think that's where we have to get left of boom and start to educate our business leaders and local investment operators on how to protect it and see it first. Thank you. Mr. Greer, um, during your time, um, what trade policy measures were being used to address this issue of uh, intellectual property theft? And do you think these uh, measures have deteriorated? Are we in a better spot or worse off? Uh, thank you, Congressman. Uh, so as I referred to in my initial testimony, we use Section 301 uh, to investigate these practices by the Chinese. Um, there are a lot of different things you can do uh, to address this. Typically, what other administrations have done is they've just had negotiations where they talk. They have a dialogue with the Chinese where they talk and try to get some kind of a, uh, a concession. Uh, what was always absent was enforcement. And so Section 301 was really focused on enforcement. And so in addition to gathering all the information, having a very open comment process where any stakeholder could come in and talk to USTR and share its views, also do it on a confidential basis, which took care of some of the challenges that our businesses face, we were able to understand, quantify the problem, bring it to the Chinese, tell them about it, give them an opportunity to remedy it, and then when they didn't, take an enforcement step. We chose to use tariffs. We chose to put tariffs on IP-intensive items. Um, is it effective? I want to use the example of electric vehicles. At the time, we were not importing many electrical vehicles from China. It is an item, it is a sector where China wanted to steal technology, where they did, where they forced JVs. We put a 25% tariff on electric vehicles. Today, there is news out there that China has become a major exporter of electrical vehicles, which they weren't at the time, but they are not to the United States. Imports of electric vehicles to the United States, only 3.6% of those imports are from China. It's because of that 25% tariff. There are other things you can do with Section 301. It doesn't have to be a tariff. You can limit services. You can limit, limit other kinds of access to the U.S. market. There are tools there that we can use to enforce, and we need to have the political will to do it. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. 